comedy stories and headlines that made it throughout the week now let me remind you that the stories are real but the jokes are on the house only made to entertain jokes are on me now none of the content in this segment is made to offend or hurt anyone only made to inform and entertain let's get to the top eight stories that made it this week story number one ladies and gents what could be causing some people to lose their minds? That is the question. Now, a report about a man who was taken into custody after allegedly overdosing on Viagra is stirring up questions about the mental health of a lot of people, not only just in America, but across the world. A 27 year old man from New York was wandering around an airport in Thailand with no clothes on. Reports say the man also threw feces at onlookers, leaving doctors and people to wonder not only about just about the mental state, but also about medicine across the world. And how is, is it working if people are taking their meds? Now, one witness reported the incident as being one of the scariest and most disgusting things that has ever been seen while at an airport. Now, like I said, the stories are real. But the jokes are on the house. Now, after recovering from his Viagra overdose, the man reportedly looked down and said, Did I do that? <laughs> like I said, there's a lot of love and joy in mediation. This ain't the sweat hotel, but I've got a lot of jokes and laughter to hand out. <laughs> Story number two, race and gender relations remain a hot topic after a speech from Oprah at the Golden Globe centered around abuse and a story about a pen of the Black Panther with the wrong skin pigmentation apparently that apparently caught the eyes of some Disney fans. People seem to be highlighting race and gender relations, gender relations for a key topic of discussion nowadays. So people seem to be talking about race and gender relations a lot, like sexual harassment and everything. Let's get to the sweet stuff now. In all of the excitement and discussions, I decided to print myself a picture of a $50 bill and I tried to spend it at a local store so I guess you know I tried to do some things myself after hearing everybody else discussing I just decided to take a picture of myself and put it on a dollar bill and I was going to go spend it I tried to spend it at the store <laughs> now after seeing the owner's reaction seeing his face I later realized that my money with my face on it, was worth nothing. <laughs> now, folks, this domestic abuse has got to stop. <laughs> I feel like I'm worth a million bucks. But my money is worth nothing. <sighs> Story number three. My confidence is still up, folks. My confidence meter is at 110% every day. I look in the mirror, and I look at myself, and I say, Brian, you can be a somebody. <laughs> now, story number three, how did the president of the United States become the enemy in the country that he leads? Now, after numerous anti-Trump demonstrations and even a rebellious book released elaborating on current affairs within the White House and the Trump administration, some small voices in the matter are trying to figure out how the commander in chief became the enemy of the state within his own administration and even within the highest office of the world. This is the question that is creating tribal wars across America and across the world. 
with the United States folks at the center of attention of a crucial conflict between fact and fiction. I don't even want to mention the names of the people who revealed some information, but I'm sure you all know by now who they are just by seeing the media reports. Now, some are left to wonder in this matter the true motives that drove the billionaire now turned president who has vowed to put America first but may be misunderstood by those looking from the outside in. So the story basically is saying that some people may not understand Trump's motive or his agenda, but um, he seems to have a strategy some way and somehow dealing with this matter. He calls himself a genius and other, he gives himself credit. So all we can do as citizens is try to figure out where we're going as Americans. Now, in the midst of the conflicts, even on the many roads that we now have, we have we have so many roads that we can decide to take in this matter. We can take Democrats. We can stay in the middle. We can take Republicans. We can take independents. There's so many roads from for us to take, but we really don't know what's at the end of each of these road folks. So no matter what we do, the ending may be the same. No matter which party or which line we decide to back up. So some people may be supporting Trump and some people may not. But either way, at the end of the day, we all have to face this together. Now, I'll have finally to come. Now, in, in the, I said the jokes are only made entertained. But me personally, I finally come to accept that I'm schizophrenic. Some days I'm liberal, and some days I'm conservative. But most of all, folks, most of the time, in both of the, in all, in each of those categories, I really don't care, <laughs> and I don't give a damn. <laughs> so why don't you vote for me, the mediator? And just like Trump, I too will put America first and make America great again, accepting the fact that I am schizophrenic. <laughs> A lot of love and mental treatment in mediation, folks. Now let's get to story number four. Why is repealing Obamacare such a challenge? After a year of failed attempts to repeal Obamacare, a law remain the well the law remains the same, and the opposing force still has to face the reality that there is one factor that keeps Obamacare in place, and that one factor well those two factors are wages and the poor. The one factor is the poor, but the two factors are wages and the poor. So Obama has found a niche in the market, something that's even biblical, that there will always be poor people around and the wealthy and the people stuck in the middle can't figure out something that works. So Obamacare in the meantime will be in stuck in place. That seems to be the key topic of discussion when people are discussing political matters are the wealthy, the middle class and the poor. And how do we make a country that is satisfied to all in each class, especially around the king's holiday, Martin Luther. Now, if you still don't get it, if you still don't understand what I'm talking about when it comes to the health care crisis, some people may not understand it. Like I said, they call, they've got all different types of term these days, uninformed voters, many things mediation that I have to decipher through and make you understand if you do not understand there is one question that may help you understand what is that one question that I've designed that may get you to understand what is actually happening on the house floor and what they're trying to decide and why they're why they're trying to repeal Obama I created one question that may get you to understand so you can be in their shoes when it comes to the health care debate now that one question is how do you subsidize or provide health care 
for everyone at an affordable and fair rate without going broke. Now, if you can decipher that one question, you might be able to understand what the politicians and the people making the laws and passing the bills and repealing and, and, and are trying to do to, to help everybody out, get everybody on the same page. Now, I've tried to answer this question myself, and I've come to wonder what the answer really could be. Could the answer be God? Could the answer to all of our health care woes be the Almighty? Take me to church. <laughs> Who knows? Story number five. I only want to be a friend to those who enjoy peace and mediation. Now, story number five reads, how do we manage drug lords and gang members? The prison system and the incarceration rates have created a new world of not only people who feel enslaved, but people who have broke the law and have to remain behind bars. This is a, 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 a big new developing story that is stirring up in the world. It's incarceration rates. People who feel that they have to take justice into their own hands, creating new cultures everywhere. People so powerful and manipulative and just able to take matters into their own hands some criminals can even be called heroes in certain situations people brave enough and cunning enough to do things that other people have not been able to do now the report reads after a devastating year plagued with drugs and violence the epidemic is real folks and there is no way around it that drugs and violence exist and when in law enforcement and just na normal innocent people who feel innocent become prey be to karma no matter what you can call it laws of nature you can call it evil you can call it good but it exists now there have even been reports circulating in brazil about a drug lord who is accused of causing a deadly jail riot now there are many solutions out there folks there are many ways that people have tried to substitute the release of dope, dopamine. They've tried so many methods. Ever since drugs were even invented, people have been plagued by the effects. But there's only one simple way that seems to have the highest percentage of actually treatment. This is the only, this may be the only way to replace the dopamine in the brain. I've even talked to an addict counselor. You can go to Method Inc. right now, and, and there is a pastor on there who specializes in trying to help people with drug addiction problems. I've talked to numerous people in my own community. I've even had family members who have battled with drug problems. And there's so many people trying to find a solution to this problem. But there's a high, the only thing that I found from some people out of people saying they've tried medicine, treatments, rehabilitations, everything. Some people say that God, even though there's a lot of people who do not believe, may be the only answer. Being the mediator, I've never tried any substances. And I don't know. Only thing I do know is that there's something high in the universe that gives us all a natural high and a natural spell of dopamine. And that's the most high, God. Take me to church. <laughs> Not in that way.
but in this way, baby. <laughs> There's a lot of love and joy and blessings and mediation. Standing in the need of a blessing when your back's against the wall and you feel you're going to fall. Say you're standing in the need of a blessing, baby. Oh, yeah. Let's get to story number six. The bathroom issue. <laughs> Sports Center's got the body issue. Where in mediation, we've got the bathroom issue. It seems that business owners and airlines are having some real problems with customers and how they treat their bathrooms. Now, this after a Spirit Airlines, a Spirit Airlines passenger was arrested for reportedly peeing all over the plane's bathroom. Now, the list of bathroom issues within public restrooms stems from drug use, sex, and even death. People are using public restrooms at their own leisure. Some people have even lived in public restrooms. <sighs> like I said, the stories are real, folks. But the jokes are on me. <laughs> but don't worry. In the midst of the battle to handle this matter, with ideas like blue lights and even past laws of segregation, I'll have a dream that one day a janitor from every color and creed wiping and cleaning sanitary bathrooms, folks. I have a dream that the janitor himself will be sanctified in the cleansing of these terrible bathrooms. I have a dream today. <laughs> Passed off from Pilly to Round. Story number seven. And the final two stories that made it into the mediator this week. <sighs> Just starting off the year. Trying to get it started off right. Hitting the weights. Story number seven, hiring women to scream sexual assault. In the midst of house fires, lost elections, and suspended athletes, a report is circulating about a Clinton backer that was paid 500 G's to stir up sexual assault claims against Donald Trump before election day. Now, I don't know how true this story is, but it made the headlines. We've got a lot to learn. But as long as there's a mediator, there's a way, folks. Do you smell what the mediator is cooking? Now, the song, I Touch Myself. By the Divinials. The, the, the Divinials. Oh, the Divinials. The Divinials may be the only solution to the lasting problems of sexual misconduct. I hope I pronounced that right. But there was a song in the 1990s called I Touch Myself. Now, do not ask me why they made a song called I Touch Myself by the Divinials, the Divinials, the 1990s band singing group. And I, and I, and I touch myself when I think about you. I touch myself. Oh, and I, and I, Anybody else who anything about you touch myself? <laughs> a song that could be saving the sexual misconduct that's plaguing the United States. When I think about you, I touch myself. <laughs> touch myself. Be the solution. Could it be the answer? Or could it just be another God, young blade? 
Take me to church. To release the dopamine. Everybody wants to get high. But let's get high off the Lord, young bleeds. Story number eight, and the final story that made it into the mediator this week. Like I said, the stories are real, but the jokes are only made to entertain. Robbing people trying to feed the poor and the immigration issue. It's a long story. The final story that made it in the media this week. Reports of a woman in her 70s was, I guess she was attacked by a man with a machete while delivering meals for Meals on Wheels in Vermont. She was attacked trying to deliver meals to the poor. This made the news along with a store owner in Youngstown, Ohio, my hometown where I was born and raised on the south side. Do you hear me, dog? In Youngstown, the man was rescued by the community after they reported claim that he was going to be deported. He was rescued by the Youngstown folks showing some love in a city that's on the rise, folks. The city of Hope, Youngstown, Ohio, trying to show some love to their fellow neighbors. The man had a, he was he owned a store. He still owns a store for it's been there for a long time. And the city came together along with officials keep the man home with his family instead of having to go overseas for the meantime he's still in the struggle to battle for his citizenship now this is after like i said the community came together now while these stories continue to circulate and develop there may be new talks about ethics rising in america not just ethics but the sacrifice and the risk that it takes that people in the local community have to have to do it is just the sacrifices that we have to go through in the local community on the local level local leaders playing a big role in protecting and impacting their communities uh, that are other people are trying to destroy so it's basically what the story is talking about is how people from the local level and we don't always need to go national people on the local level are making big time changes in their own communities i mean we we hear negative stories even about celebrities sometimes but some people always come back home to support those in need now community heroes coming to the forefront around martha king jr day is probably the best thing to do um, because that could be what the dream was all about and what the dream stands for as we reach the holiday that could be, I'm pretty sure, you know, Martin Luther King was a big active in not only civil issues, but race relations and everything. And he, he was not an advocate of segregation and Jim Crow laws, but he wanted to see people working together. And, and you see it, the ripple effects throughout a lot of people. We see, we've seen um, KKK activists coming together and acting, asking for forgiveness for their past. I mean, we, we don't know what our life is like when we're young. And we don't know what we're doing sometimes, but sometimes the people humble themselves. I've read even prison people, people who have been incarcerated coming at the end of their journey, coming to the victims and apologizing. And they, some of them even still had to face execution. But that may be what the dream is all about, redemption. And um, there's a lot of faith out there that teach redemption. Christianity is one of them. There's so many others. But uh, even religions coming together and trying to make a difference with people who could be trying to stir up the pot and always trying to cause chaos. And we have uh, relations all over the world, um, Islam and ISIS and Christians. And we had, uh, I mean, but so many people are coming together and trying to stop this. Like I said, Youngstown is a prime example. Happy to be from a place that has little but has a lot of heart. And uh, if you if you've ever lived here, we see a lot of things happening within our own communities, a lot of things that we cannot understand. But for some odd reason, the people who are left behind and who are left here in Youngstown come find a way to make things happen. And they came together for the activists and they well, it came together as activists to help the man in need, especially around uh, the king's birthday. Now, folks. Do not want to distract you, but there's got to be sweetness after the story. Now, in other news, 
Sources say that they spotted Dick Clark and Jackie Wilson at the Dick Clark New Year's Rockin' Eve. Then they woke up from the dream. Oh! <laughs> well, I want to thank you so much for tuning into the media here this week, keeping the dream alive, living the dream. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to thank you so much for tuning into the media here this week. Please don't forget to show some love, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and if you want to spend some money on us and help us out any type of way, you can go to our website. You don't even have to spend money. You either buy something, click on something, watch something, or just read something. I want to thank you so much for tuning to the media this week. Thanks for staying overtime with me around the King's Dream, baby, the King's Holiday. Thank you for tuning in. Have a good week, everybody, and have a good holiday. Celebrating the dream. I'm living it alone, all by myself, in a room. Listening to the radio. When I think about you, I touch myself. Oh, yeah. Have a good week, everybody. If you need help, then dial your operator. Have no fear, fellow citizens. The media is here.